If you use a Mac and you love Vim, you know this frustration. You're typing a long Slack message or an important email and your fingers automatically try to hit that escape or JJ to switch to normal mode and then maybe DD to delete a line. But all you see is your previous Vim motion typed into your message. You sigh and move over to your mouse. That muscle memory you've spent years building is suddenly useless and you're forced to reach out for the arrow keys or again, the mouse like a barbarian. You've probably done everything you can to fix this. You have Vimium for your browser, you use NeoVim for your code and long text, you use plugins for Obsidian or other Notes apps, and you've even remapped your keyboard with a bunch of other tools. Your setup is 85% there, but that last 15% in all those random text boxes in native applications can drive you nuts. It can be Alfred or Raycast or the Notes app or your phone messages. It feels like a core part of your workflow is missing and it's not critical enough to spend days solving, but it's a constant nagging annoyance. I lived with this exact problem for years, until recently when a friend, shout out to Tris from No Boilerplate, sent me something that was, for the lack of a better word, my painkiller. It was the absolute perfect solution I had been wishing for years. It's not perfect right out of the box, but with a few minor tricks and tweaks, I've set it to be a core utility that will absolutely stay with me for a long, long time. This is kind of it. It's slick, it's great, and in its own way, it's hilarious. We'll touch the alternatives and everything you need to know to create your perfect setup. Let me show you how it brings the emotions everywhere. The selling point of KV is rather straightforward. It's Vim mode for macOS. That's it. But the power it brings, oh my, it's notes and emails, but also lists and dropdowns, all sparkled with Vim magic powder. And I promise it's going to be funny kind of Vim, which I'll refer to as KV from now on, is different in everything. It has an unlimited trial, but not in the way you think. The free version gets lazy, meaning non-functional in the morning. I personally think that's creative and lets you keep using the thing without being limited to hours or days, but others don't. The issue, dedicated to a complaint over the creative free tier, is part of the GitHub repo, dedicated for docs and issues. It also conveniently lists alternatives, open source ones, free ones, which I personally tried. Carabiner, that I actually have currently installed for other mappings, didn't have the full scale of motions I was looking for. The spoon, and you can't say I don't like hammer spoon, I made an entire video around it and I'll link that one above, but not only the spoon isn't maintained, it has bugs. Doesn't come with the important motions like find and t, and has a bunch of others and is simply not there. Sketchy Vim, from the home of Felix Kratz, who authored great projects like Junkie Borders, a Sketchy Bar, and other pair of projects I covered in the aerospace video also linked up here. While it is a good option, it lacks crucial options for me, like replacing the normal mode hotkey and more. I'll save you some time here. The rest are just aren't as good. All cards on the table, I didn't actually pick all and tested them for a long while, so everything said here should be taken with a grain of salt. You know what? Even better. Check me on this, comment and let me know if there's a better contender, I'd be happy to hear. Let's go ahead, download, unzip, move to the applications and approve. This is the settings panel where you can change the trigger sequence, applications to skip or to handle differently and other options. Out of the box, especially if you're an avid terminal user, you're going to find it quite annoying. Here's a one-liner, I then escape. Now, just to show the background feature signifying normal mode, here's the entire screen on a Mac where hitting escape adds a dark, almost black feature underneath the focus window. Now I can perform my motions, but they don't seem to be doing much here. I'm trying to hit B to jump backwards, but this is one of those rough edges and the terminal is best used with VI mode. Some motions will work here, X removing characters and hey JKL moving around the text, but it's not enough. So how do we get back to the insert mode? Correct, with I. The effect is off indicating insert mode. Okay, so the terminal isn't great for that, but what about Raycast? A short text inserted and then escape again. For normal mode, darkens everything underneath. Moving backwards with B works great. I can X characters, move around and go back to insert mode. But this is just a line. What about full text? Let's open a note that has a title and a code snippet. I can move, but trying to delete suddenly gets stuck again. So before getting all frustrated, as I have, either read docs or keep watching. One of the hardest things about learning a new programming language isn't just memorizing syntax, it's staying motivated long enough to actually finish a real project. It's a problem I ran into in the past, it's something junior devs I'm working with are struggling tackling and it's why I'm genuinely excited to show you with dev. You know, with all the AI code stuff out there, 
the devs who will really go far are the ones who can actually read and understand code. I've been using bootdev myself to help colleagues dive into Go. I just finished their build a blog aggregator path and it was awesome. Bootdev gets that you can't just watch videos if you want to learn how to code. You have to put the reps in. From chapter one, you're building. Every lesson is a hands-on challenge. They gamify it with points and badges, keeping you going. Their whole thing is learn without boredom. Want backend with Go, Python or JavaScript or even SQL? Bootdev has got you covered. Seriously, check out Bootdev, play with their interactive lessons for free. If you like it and get the annual plan, use my code DevOps Toolbox for 25% off your first year. Great place if you're serious about backend development. Now back to the video. Open the KV settings. There's a bunch of options here. First, the wizard, drop an app and it'll analyze the best approach. As you can see, the three columns below are either for applications to completely ignore. For example, I'm going to ignore the terminal altogether. Then you have the apps that have problems with deleting text. This is an API problem and one of the reasons why you won't enjoy kind of Vim's alternatives from earlier. We'll drop Raycast here and retry its notes app. And then you have Electron. Honestly, I tried a bunch of Electron apps. Famously, Slack is one of them and had no issues yet so far. So for now, this stays empty. Let's remove the applications from the lists and reset them from scratch. First off, Wisdom. We can drag it straight to off, but let's have the wizard do its magic first. It suggests any terminal application use VI mode rather than KV, which I'm going to comply with. Hit add to off and it's dropped to the off column. Breakcast is next and that's going to be the list of apps that's partially working, but deletion is for some reason blocked. Let's pop Raycast notes again and yay, deleting a character and the word works great. Don't worry, we're touching all available motions in a few seconds. Let's just finalize our config by adjusting the normal mode trigger to a sequence and what's better than the rolling JK, which is my new NeoVim favorite after years of JJ. Now. There is the notes again, as well as some key casting below to help with visibility. The first motion is simply W for jumping around words and its counterpart B for doing the same, only moving backwards. Then we can delete characters with X or everything past the cursor with Shift D. Underscore takes you to the first character on a line from where we can use F to find a character, in this instance S. And just like in Vim, you can keep going to the next find result hitting semicolon. This also naturally works backwards with Shift F. Cool. Now for interesting stuff. Down below, I have a code snippet that I can indent lines forward or backward as I would in Vim. I can use visual mode to, let's say, VIW to visually select inside a word. This works beautifully in lower and uppercase W motions that touches either a word or every character between two spaces. This is a good place to remind you that if you want more about that and other differences, hidden Vim motions, check my video that covers all about it up here. You can change the character's case with tilde. You can make a change and then hit U to undo, which for some reason pleases me a lot. And yeah, I know you can just command Z, I know. CIW will change in a word. And by the change of the background, you might have realized it snapped back into insert mode as you'd expect. Now, here's where I'm blown away something no VI mode has. You can CI double quotes, for example, to change inside the next pair of quotes, and of course, delete inside them. The same is available with parentheses and every other known pair of signs. VI curly braces and the function's content is selected. Yanking a line and pasting with YYP, no problem. If you want to repeat, however, by adding five before everything, well, not so much. This is where the limits start showing up, but I'm okay with it. Here's another limit. There's no vertical selection in visual mode. Ctrl V does basically nothing and that's a bit of a shame as it's one of my favorite theme motions. But if I'm honest I don't actually cut columns inside emails or slack messages so we'll be all right. About those emails and slack messages let's get these apps to see KV in action. How about the general slack channel for the AWS community builders to do some tests. Hello how's everybody? JK and Nice. B jumps back. W forward. DW removes the word. Undo restores it. Works great. How about a new line in my message? O seems to be creating that new line, but oh my god, I did not intend to send this to 3,261 people. What if there's the same code snippet on a Slack message? No problem, DD will delete a line. But there's some weird parsing going on here where when I try to YYP a line, I'm guessing this is part of an electron sharp edges mentioned earlier. Visual mode works great, marking a line, then an entire block. Honestly, you can't ask for much more. Okay, settings, check. 
Motions, check. Different apps, check. What about tracking the configuration? I'm a dot .files connoisseur or aficionado. Anyway, I track my dot .files. So the KV settings can be found under library slash preferences where an interestingly named file mo.com.sleeplessmind kind of in plist will hold everything together. Reading it isn't easy, but there are some familiar strings here pointing to applications I've configured like Western, Obsidian and Raycast. Now, I don't need to know what's in here. I just want to track it so that it's restorable when I need it. Here's what I did. Under dot .files I have kind of it now. I moved the file we've just seen there and symlinked it back to its original location. Now there's a symlink instead of an actual file in the original path. KV seemed to be recognizing this and has no issues despite reports of Apple restricting symlinking OS application settings. I don't know, maybe I'll hit a wall, but for now it's there and it works. I also just committed it and you'll find it on my .files repo on GitHub should you need my very specific three application setup. We've mentioned a lot of emailing here, so I wanted to quickly show how KV works smoothly on the mail app and a great place to point another unmentioned motion, the GG and Shift G to move between the start or end of document, either to select or delete the text altogether. It is important to stress that you're very much not limited to text only. You can operate on the list of emails, for example, on the mail app or any other app for that matter. DD will even send a deletion signal, removing stuff from your list. If you're Googling away and want to scroll through optional results, KV will work exactly the same. It's Vim motions, but for everything. I've got a small surprise before we wrap things up. I contacted Jill or Gil, the author behind Kind of Him, and asked him to share a message or an anecdote. And beyond him being a super chill dude and super nice, he shared a couple of things. One, he says he's really available for any question or comment, both via email and on his Twitter account. And he also mentions that he monitors the repo closely for issues if you have any. The second, can you guess where that idea of KV sleeping from 5 a.m. to 1 p.m. came from? Those were his sleeping hours for the first two years of digging into the macOS. APIs to see if that was even possible to do what he wanted to. That's it. All KV's docs are available on docs.kindofim.app should you want to further explore the API, available motions, how it manipulates text, etc. Kind of him makes your Vim motions live everywhere. But are you really controlling these motions? How about upgrading to a wizard level with this video covering every motion possible, A to Z, both available on Vim, NeoVim, and with Kind of him, pretty much everywhere. Oh, and a huge thanks again to BootDev for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to use the code DevOps Toolbox to get 25% off and start your backend development journey today. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one.